so I've been waiting for this moment probably for like, like the last two to three months. And the reason why is because I have something special I'd like to share with you. Um, I wish I could do it live, but I can't because this way I can get it out to the masses for everybody to see and review what we have in store here at Nathan Hale Middle School. If you don't know who I am, I'm James Crouch. I'm the principal here. And when I tell you that um, I've been kind of waiting on this for a long time, this is my intellectual property that I would like to share with you today because we are going to revitalize the way we educate children. So let me introduce you to my program called FRESH. And FRESH stands for Future Ready Education with Social and Emotional Healing. Now, it's a little bit different because I wanted to combine real world experiences, but also with mental health issues as well, so we could start working on our youth and take back their innocence. Unfortunately, we live in a time to where our students, your children, are being raised by digital platforms. There are more kids more involved in TikTok and Facebook and Snapchat than sports. When was the last time that you went down a, a street in your neighborhood and you saw kids outside playing two in touch football? playing baseball, playing basketball in the driveway. Unfortunately, our kids are more in tune to get on digital platforms and interact with each other. So maybe we could combine both, right? And it starts here, right here at Nathan Hill Middle School. So let me introduce you to Fresh. Raise your hand. Be honest when you were in school, if you were interested if you love to go to school. Now, I'm just guessing, maybe 30% find school interesting, wanted to go every single day. And the reason why is because the majority of the things that we learn, it didn't really involve us. So now, imagine creating an environment where kids love to come to school, where kids wake up in the morning, get dressed, excited, about getting on the bus to come to Nathan Hill Middle School. And this is what we're gonna to do to create that type of learning environment. I wanna start teaching our kids about all gamuts of life. And it starts here, where cryptocurrency is one. So some may believe and think that this is fake money, why would you teach them that, it's gonna crash, etc. And that may be the case, or maybe not. This is the wave of the future for the metaverse to where we have to start exposing our students to Bittrex, right? To Bitcoin, to what cryptocurrency exchange, e-wallets, because it's of the future. What will be obsolete is what you have in your pocket right now, in your wallet, is paper money. So, I observed the video the other day to where a woman brought about $250 worth of groceries and goes up to the machine to pay. And she doesn't pull out a card. She doesn't pull out her Apple Pay, nothing. She takes her hand, boop, and pays for an entire bill with her hand. So if you're telling me that there's a new wave coming down the pike, we have to be prepared for it. So why not exposing our children to what's coming? What about this? Take a look. Culinary characters. Imagine your child developing the skill set to create something like this. Fresh fruit, healthy snacks. But it's so advertising. You want to eat this. You want to be a part of something like this. And this is a skill set that they can start now. They don't have to wait till they're 21, go to culinary school. We can expose them how to make things like this now at an early age because the future is not gonna wait. So we have to start preparing our kids for the future. YouTube money in the bank. 
all of our students are great, especially at gaming, okay? They get on Call of Duty, Roadblocks, all of these games, they know the cheat codes, how to pass the secret uh, levels, etc. And they watch people give them advice on how to do it for hours on YouTube. Why not be the trendsetters and start teaching our kids how to do the exact same thing? YouTube money in the bank to where we are pre presenting them with the opportunity to make money but at the same time, developing their skill set. You have to be articulate when you do a presentation. You have to be charming to make sure that you separate yourself from the rest. All of these things, life skills that kids don't even know that they're learning, is not just for YouTube, but also about life. What happens they won't go into advertising? They have a fresh start, a brand new advantage over someone else because we're starting preparing them now and also at the same time, financial literacy. When I was growing up, okay, when I was in school, I learned everything except the one thing I wanted to learn about. And that was how to help my mother. That was how to become rich. Nobody ever taught me that lesson. But I refused to sit back and not educate my children on what it takes to be financially secure. Because they deserve that. Hollywood heroes, script writing. So I'm gonna let the cat out the bag now. We're going to shoot a movie here at Nathan Hill Middle School. No, I don't think you really understand what I'm trying to say. A movie, not no little seven minute skit, etc. I'm talking about a feature film to where hopefully we have the opportunity to go downtown Sono at the AMC, red carpet, the whole nine. My kids will sit in a movie theater with popcorn, with soda, with candy, and watch themselves on the big screen. And we have the talent to do it. There's so many talented actors here. And I have been writing a script. I have about 30 scenes already to where now I'm putting the final touches on it to where kids are going to start creating content to where we give them scenarios. And my wonderful theater arts teacher, Mrs. Littlefield, she will guide them along on how to create a treatment, what it's like to fade in and out. All of, this, all of these things that we take for granted, right? About when you go to a movie, you see, they're gonna learn the intricate parts of how to make a movie. And if you know me, if I say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. Simple as that. So be ready, okay? About April or May, the launch of the first movie ever from a middle school feature film here at Nathan Hill Middle School. Hailtown, not Motown, but Hailtown. If you have a movie, don't you have a soundtrack? You have to. So what we're gonna do is, I've connected with Sono Studios, okay, right downtown. And Melody, thank you very much for partnering with me to where I'm gonna take my kids to the studio. And they're gonna get in the sound booth, they're gonna throw in the headsets, they're gonna record, they're gonna work the track board, they're gonna learn how to make a beat, from soup to nuts, anything and everything you can ever imagine about what it takes to be in the music recording business. Sometimes we take for granted that it's not just about the artists. What about the people who engineer? What about the people who do the sound? They make a lucrative living and careers off of that. So why can't we start exposing our students now at 11 and 12 and 13 years old? We may not find the next Ariana Grande or Beyonce, but you may find the next biggest engineer that makes $250 an hour mixing down the records. And that's what I'm talking about. Exposing kids to many different experiences in all fields and endeavors. Sing that tune. So now, in order for us to have a soundtrack, 
we have to make a song. I have a secret weapon here at Nathan L. Middle School, and his name is Mr. Kevin Bermudez. Kevin is a phenomenal artist, but he's also probably the greatest writer that I've heard in the past 10 to 15 years. Mr. Bermudez will sit down with your children and teach them how to write a song, a real song, with ad-libs. You see the 16 bar setups, everything that it takes that goes behind the scene before it goes on the radio. It takes hours and hours of practice to get that song up to a level to win a Grammy. And you have someone who's capable of doing that right here in this school, working with your children every day. He's a great Spanish teacher, but he's a phenomenal artist. Just wait till the soundtrack comes out. Bobby Fisher Chess Club. And this is simple, I know it's been done so many different times, but it was brought to my attention by one of my eighth graders last year. He said, Mr. Crouch, can we please have a chess club? I would love to learn how to play, but also play other schools. And when you think about what we have with extra murals, right? With just football, indoor hockey, basketball, we have soccer and volleyball. We need to start developing more clubs like chess. I would love to go play Roten and West Rocks and Ponies and have our kids sit at the table with the machine like a real chess competition and display the grit, the high level thinking skills necessary. All of these things are important in development of our youth. So let's give them an opportunity, okay? And all it really takes is a couple of boards and time and commitment. And I have that here for my staff who is willing to do that. And all it takes is for us just to give students the opportunity. Dance troupe. So I'm not just talking about a regular dance club to where I could put them in room 114 in one classroom so they can work on some little routine. No, I'm talking about a real dance troupe to where I could put them on a bus they go to some type of studio, I don't know yet, but I'll find one, where they can have the glass background drop, right? The bar to stretch, learn all types of dance. Not just hip hop, not just what you see on the videos, etc. I wanna teach my kids how to do the waltz. I wanna teach them how to do the merengue and bachata and all these different type of cultural dances because it's more than just what they see when they watch TV. I want them to be culturally sound, to be, to, be go, to be able to go in any arena and feel comfortable. And it's up to us to do it. So let's do it. Nobody's stopping us but us. And I'm reaching out to the community to say that any barrier that you may feel will prevent us from doing this, let's break it down. Break it down. We are the innovators. And let the other people be the imitators because Mr. Krauss doesn't follow anyone. I set the trend. This is huge. This is the one that I don't even know how big it can be. Project Nathan Hale Middle School Runway. I connected with a famous designer. His name is Devin Spencer. He um, owns a company called Euro Currency. Big time artists come to him for pieces. He is so passionate about joining me and developing not just spirit wear to where we just press Nathan Hill Middle School with the logo, uh, sweatshirts or t-shirts or pajamas, etc. We're going to teach kids how to make their own clothing line from soup to nuts, from stitching to cutting the material to what material looks like, to embroidery, to labeling to branding, everything that you can think of, okay? He has dedicated his time and willing to work with our students to do something special. And you can't have clothes without a premier fashion show. So you know that's in the work as well. But just imagine how you would feel as 11 or 12 year old coming to school with jeans, with the sweatshirt, with the hat, that you designed. You didn't buy it at the mall. You designed it yourself. 
And this is what I want my kids to be able to do. Because who knows, they may be the next winner of the real Project Runway. And they could say, I got my start right here at Project NHMS Runway. Poetry Slam. Snap it up, snap it up, snap it up. Okay? You talking about high level language arts lessons? You talking about the creativity that some of our kids have already? They just don't have the platform to do it. You talking about developing public speaking skills to where people are just terrified to get in front of people to recite anything. Now you have the platform to where you can teach them what it's like to be a poet, how it feels to get on stage. And it doesn't take much, but just belief in our kids, an opportunity to present on the show. So let's do it. Poetry Slam, coming to a theater near you, guaranteed. World of Doc. So, the day and age that we live in, I have a feeling that documentaries will replace real movies. Just look at Netflix now. Just look at Hulu, Amazon Prime, TV, right? Apple TV. All of these documentaries that people are making and developing because there's stories out there that we're not aware of. We're gonna teach our kids how to do it here. You're talking about history lessons? This is a real history lesson where you can make history come alive through a documentary that kids are interested in. I have so many ideas that I'm not gonna say now because I want to come from them and not me, that I would love to produce. And I have a special, special, special guest coming on October 17th here. I'm not gonna say anything now, but we're in works to developing that he's gonna come speak to my seventh and eighth graders about being an entrepreneur, about being a businessman, because he's probably one of the highest selling uh, record producers, executive producers ever with his record label. And we discuss doing a documentary on him when he comes on October 17th. But it's not gonna be done by me. It's not gonna be done by Mr. Codell. It's not gonna be done by a teacher. It's gonna be done by our kids. Our kids will create the questions to ask him and develop their documentary, okay, on this hip hop mogul. So stay tuned, because it's going to happen. Real estate. Unfortunately, my fear when it comes to education is that we are putting so much time and interest into rote learning. The same thing that when you and I were in school, we did the same lessons, right? So you can frame it any way you would like to. But my fear is that the jobs that we're preparing our students for now, they may be obsolete in 10 to 11 years. This will never go out of style. This will always be here because people always need a place to live. So you're talking about real estate and we have the perfect opportunity to teach, our, to teach our kids about real estate. And it's a game that we've played since we were six, seven years old as a family, right? Monopoly. Imagine creating our own monopoly to where we use properties in Norwalk or Connecticut, or New York, or California. You teaching kids about how to survey land. What's the most promising up and coming platform or land space in the country? And how you can develop and make money. This is so important. Just exposing them to what a real estate looks like and what it takes to become a real estate agent. So why not start here now? Why do you have to wait till you get out of school or go to college or go to some type of real estate brokerage uh, firm or conference to be excited about it? Let's start planting the seeds now about who's going to be the next real estate billionaire 
and it may be right here in this school. We just, uh, we just don't know it yet. So if you have real estate, you know you need stocks, okay? Once again, I just told you that they taught me everything I needed to know in school, except what I wanted to learn. No one ever taught me how to make money. Nobody ever said, you know what, Jay? Instead of taking your birthday money and going out and buying a pair of Air Jordans, okay, and being broke again, why don't you take that money and put that money into Nike? Okay, instead of wearing these clothes, wearing Lee's and Izod shirts, why don't you take that money and put it into the company? This is what kids need to know about. Okay, this is what financial literacy is about. Not just how to make money, but how to save money, how to invest money. Why not now? This is the future. This is what it's all about. This is the level that we want our kids to get to. So teach them now. We don't have to wait right now. I'm just gonna read this if you can't see it because this has the potential just to change lives. When I say lives, I'm talking about even curriculums. Camp Scrubs, this is an introductory program within my program, Fresh that aims to provide middle school students with an immersive experience in the medical field. Through this program, students can explore various aspects of the healthcare industry, including learning about different medical professions, understanding basic anatomy and physiology, and gaining exposure to medical technologies and procedures. Camp Scrubs offers a hands-on approach to learning that allows students to develop a deeper understanding of the medical field. It can inspire and encourage students who are interested in pursuing careers in healthcare. Is everyone gonna be a doctor? Probably not. But there's so many other professions that go along with healthcare that kids have no idea about. What about being an anesthesiologist? What about being a nurse? What about being an x-ray technician? What about all these different occupations that, al that align with healthcare and being a successful business person or having a successful career? Expose them to it. What about having dentists come in, right? A mobile center so kids can see what it's like to be a dentist. All of these things are right at our fingertips and I need to do my part in allowing kids the opportunity to experience real world scenarios. Camp Scrubs right here at Nathan Hale Middle School. So, to this day, no one can explain to me what an NFT is. <laughs> to this day, I still don't know what it is. I know it's a non-fungible token. I know it has something to do with digital art and it changes hands and blockchains and, but I still don't know what it is. But what I do know that it's very, very profitable. Digital art is very profitable and people are making lucrative transactions with this platform, NFT. So, who knows? One of our kids may be the next NFT guru, okay? NIL, name, image, and likeness. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for saying this, but it's the truth. The biggest crooks ever are the NCAA. That's just my opinion, I could be wrong. But, we give athletes free books free room and board and a great education right to play high level sports but these athletes generate billions of dollars for universities and children receive nothing nil changed the game to where they can get paid now off their name image and likeness and this is great opportunity but you know what comes along with this? 
also character. In order for your name, image, and likeness to be productive, you have to be a productive citizen. And I'm teaching my kids now at an early age that who knows, you may be the next social media influencer, okay? And your NIL depends on your character and how people feel about you here now at an early age. So NIL may not be lucrative for them now, but in the future, you never know. But they need to be exposed. They need to know what it is. And who knows, develop their own NIL platform or program. Before it's too late, social emotional healing. Now, if you came to the open house, okay, I showed you guys a video about what we're going to do here. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward and I'm gonna save this video for last because it's very, very special. And you need to see the dedication, the commitment that we have to mental health here at Nathan Hill Middle School. Okay, are we perfect? Of course not. I'll be the first one to tell you I'm gonna make mistakes. I know I can't please everyone and that's okay. I accept that, but you have 100% commitment from me to make sure that every single kid in this building has a connection with an adult. They feel special about themselves and they leave here with a smile on their face, even if they walked in the door with a frown. That's my commitment to you, to my community, that I'm invested wholeheartedly in your children to make sure that they feel special about themselves. So I'll save this for later, okay? Adopt a seasoned friend. This is huge. So when we talk about mental health, and we talking about commitment to people who are maybe less fortunate enough to have visitors at this age, this stage in their life, okay? And there's so many different partnerships I would like to develop. One right down the corner at Maplewood and more even within uh, the Norwalk community to where I would love to bring children, okay, to make commitments and connections with some of these elderly people living in assisted living homes and develop relationships that they can cherish and look forward to. And when I tell you, I'm not, I'm not just talking about any student, I'm talking about even my most challenging students that we say, why do they need to behave like this? They struggle in school. They have such uh, anger issues or, you know, um, whatever it is that they're struggling with. This is more therapeutic for them, right, than some of the citizens. Because those type of relationships can change lives. And I would love to see them in action, dealing with someone like their grandmother or they call their great grandmother and just form that bond, that commitment, and that dedication to show these people. Even if you haven't had a visit in two years, you have one now. And we're gonna be here once a month, I don't know, maybe once every two months, and we're dedicated. I would love to bring Christmas presents to these people to give it to them. I would love to have my chorus, band, and orchestra put on performances for this community. And it's just about having a heart and I'm fully in, I'm fully invested to make sure that I try to touch everyone, not just my staff, not just my students here, but this entire community. Now this is personal for me, I can't even lie. And I'm a very, very, very sensitive guy. But if you ever wanna see me cry in a heartbeat, all you have to do is show a kid with cancer to me, um, a child dying, and that's it, okay? So when I say cool dude St. Jude, I would love to start a partnership with St. Jude because that's just special to me. But not just St. Jude, also Make-A-Wish Foundation. Okay, I have a young man currently in my school that missed an entire year last year because he was battling cancer. And when I tell you, when I see him every single day, I have the biggest smile on my face because he is one of my heroes. You talk about being resilient, okay? You talk about having a mental toughness and a fortitude to fight through treatment after treatment after treatment and still come to school every single day now? How can I ever 
part my lips to complain about anything when I see a kid like that. So I'm gonna do anything and everything for him and kids who look like him on the same situation or maybe develop some type of program that we can make their wishes come true and do anything possible, right? So they understand that we have people behind you that care and love you and wanna make your dreams come true. Cool dude, St. Jude. Personal for me, but hopefully it's personal for you. Nathan Hell Helping Hands. This is where I reach out to you in the community and say, we are all a team. We are family. I need you. I need your commitment to come and help me and my staff dedicate time at homeless shelters. Okay, at soup kitchens, anything for the less fortunate because we are very, very lucky and we should be proud and we should understand that this is not given and anything can change at the drop of a hat. So let's go out and just praise everybody. Let's go out and try to help people who are less fortunate than us because it's the right thing to do. Okay, Nathan Hale community, I'm reaching out to you. And you don't have to tell me, we can start developing on your own and just give me the final project about what you wanna do. And long as it's productive, long as it's sincere, long as it's genuine, I'm all in, okay? I don't need no photo ops. I don't want any type of attention. I just wanna be able to help others who are less fortunate than us. Meet the Ivies. So, I left this here for a reason, because I did change a couple of things. When I first thought about exposing kids to college, I want my kids to go to the best, right? And IVs are so-called the best. So my original plan was to send the sixth graders, they go to Yale, the seventh graders would visit Columbia in New York City, and the eighth graders would go to Harvard, right? In Massachusetts. But as I thought about it, I had to be realistic, okay? How many of our kids over a three year span, if I have say 1,600 students that come through Nathan Hale in three years, how many of them would really go to one of these schools? Maybe some, 1% maybe, I don't know, who knows, right? So about 1,500, 15 maybe, and that's maybe a little unrealistic, but, I want to tear it down a little bit, but I wanted you to see my original thought. But here's what I want to do now. The reason why exposing kids in college is so important, because you really don't know you want to go until you step foot on the campus. It happened to me. I thought I would never go to college. No one in my family on both sides went to college. Step when I did it. Okay, and I knew as soon as I stepped foot on that campus, this is where I wanted to be. From looking at the beautiful grass on the yard, to looking at the uh, student center, how beautiful it was, all right? And of course, the girls, they helped too, can't lie. But I knew for a fact, this is where I needed to be. And it made me work harder. So now, my new proposal is we're gonna take the sixth graders to Southern, because it aligns with Fresh, with the Media Lab. They have a beautiful facility, okay? The seventh graders, they will go to stores up in Connecticut. I know one of the famous, you know, the basketball tradition and a lot, a lot of my staff members, they graduated from stores. But the eighth graders, we're gonna keep Harvard. So it's three different tiers that hopefully, three years from now, by them going to three campuses, 100% of our kids will believe that they can go to a high level university. And it starts with me setting the tone and exposing them to what college really is. So, I told you that I would say this for last, okay? And this is probably the most important part of the entire presentation. So unfortunately last year, we sent out a survey, uh, maybe about May and it was talking about mental health and making connection with adults. And when I saw the results, 
with one question. And the question was, do you have a connection with any adults in the building, at least one? And over 130 kids, they said they didn't have any connection with adult here at Nathan Hill Middle School. That brought tears to my eyes because I'm a part of this staff. And if 130 kids feel as if they don't have a connection with me, then I'm doing something wrong. So, I saw this video, and when I saw it, it touched me so much, I knew if there was one initiative that we were gonna change to change the entire culture of this building, this was the one. Okay, so I can't take credit for it, but I am making sure that we do this here. So just take a look and see how special this is, and know that your child will receive the same thing here at Nathan Hale Middle School. Okay, all well, you tough guys out there choked up, it's perfectly fine. I watched this video probably 20 times and I still get emotional. Because this is important. This is something that a child would value forever. Not just in middle school. They can have this 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and refer back to it. So this is my commitment to you. That your child's gonna feel special every single day. That's why my staff is greeting them at the door, every single class they walk into. Good morning, good afternoon, how are you? Because no one will ever leave the school again and not have a connection with an adult. And you can have my word on that. So, that is fresh. This is my dream, but I'm depending on you and us to make this a reality. If you don't know anything about me, 
please understand that. I may be a little crazy, I know, but I'm crazy for your kids. I would do anything and everything to make sure that they're successful. And I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your background is. I can care less. The only thing that I know is that I have you for seven hours a day, for 182 days. I'm gonna do anything and everything it takes to make sure that you're successful. Thank you for joining me, okay? More to come, but this is just the beginning. Let's make history, Nathan Hale community. Thank you.